Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wiryawan and today I want to compare my smartphone against my other cameras for a trip to Iceland. Let's go. Before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back. I hope that you will enjoy today's video. And if you are a new viewer of my channel, also welcome. I hope that you will also enjoy today's video. In this channel, we're talking about photography, filmmaking, cameras, micro photos, lenses. Also, we're talking about music, home recording, guitar, rock metal, that kind of stuff. So if you're into those kind of things, please consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's continue with today's video. So last week, I made a video about the cameras and lenses that I brought with me on my recent trip to Iceland. If you haven't watched that video, please check out the video up here above. I will put a card right there. But basically uh, in that video, I uh, explained my observation about uh, the cameras and lenses, specifically micro footage cameras and lenses that I brought on my recent trip to Iceland, as well as some non micro footage cameras that I brought as well to record videos. However, in that video, there is one secret camera that I haven't mentioned. And I will talk about that secret camera right here. Now, as you have probably guessed about the secret camera, the secret camera is my smartphone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. And this is my smartphone that I brought with me on my recent trip to Iceland. Now, I won't really go into details about my smartphone as a communication device about its specs, but I wanna dive deeper into its camera capabilities and how it compares with my other cameras, specifically my micro four thirds cameras. So a few months ago, I made a video comparing the camera capabilities of my S21 FE compared with my Micro Four Thirds camera, compared with my DJI Pocket 2 and also my Insta360 Go 2, especially in the video capabilities. And you can check that video up here. So it's a little bit more of a general comparison and just an overall thought about uh, the smartphone cameras. However, in this video, I wanna be very specific. I wanna be a little bit more focused with my experience of using the S21 FE as an alternative photography and video camera during my trip to Iceland. Where does it perform best and where does it need improvement and also what can it do and what it cannot do. So just a little bit of a basic specs on the rear part of the smartphone, we have three cameras. So one of them is the ultra wide angle lens and one of them is the normal wide lens and then the other one is a telephoto lens. And then on the front of the smartphone, we have one selfie camera as well. The ultra wide camera in full frame terms is about 14 millimeters and then the normal wide is about 24 millimeter and then the telephoto is about 70 something millimeter. So when we compare it with real cameras, specifically my micro four that setup, it's like having three lenses in one, an ultra wide and then a normal wide and then also a medium telephoto. So when I visited Iceland recently, I brought my micro four touch cameras with all the lenses and also uh, my DJI Pocket 2 and also my Insta360 Go 2. And yeah, they perform really great. However, I also use my phone a lot to capture mostly photographs as well as a little bit of videos. So if I'm encountering something that is serious and mission critical when it comes to photography and video, I will always use my micro photos cameras uh, during my trip to Iceland. So if it's a really nice waterfall, a really nice landscape, or just a very precious moment, then I will uh, take photograph of it and also video uh, using my micro photos cameras using the best way possible. I will try to use filters or tripods if needed or other accessories uh, to better uh, improve the photographs or video as needed. However, I will also use my phone as a backup to my micro photos cameras so I can get two identical pictures uh, using different cameras and yeah, usually with the smartphone, I also tend to photograph something that is a little bit less serious and a little bit more like a snapshot, not really like a photograph. 
and it's been doing really well in that regard and I'm really happy with the results that I got from my smartphone. So when comparing picture quality between my micro four thirds cameras and my smartphone, the S21 FE in terms of photography, although obviously my micro four thirds camera will take better picture, uh, the S21 FE is not bad at all. It's actually more than good enough for my needs. It's uh, more of a casual kind of cameras in my opinion, not really for something too serious, but it can still take really great picture. All the three lenses perform wonderfully. The ultra wide has been really great for capturing waterfalls when taking out my micro four thirds camera is just way too cumbersome because of the water splashes and whatnot. And then the normal angle lens is also very beautiful for taking cityscape, for taking a little bit of street photography. And the telephoto lenses is really great uh, for uh, taking a little bit of compression shots for something a little bit far away, you know. So I've been really happy with using my phone as my alternative camera. Sharpness, yeah, it's kind of not as sharp as the micro four thirds camera. However, uh, it is more than good enough. And then colors is a little bit more vibrant when compared to my micro four thirds camera. However, usually when I edit my pictures, I always try to make my pictures to be a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more lively, not really muted. So yeah, I really like the pictures coming out from my S21 FE. There's also some clever trickery such as the night mode, uh, if you want to capture something in lower light situation, and also portrait mode if you want to create that artificial background blur as well, you can do that with the smartphone. I also use the smartphone a lot on situations where I don't really want to use my micro four thirds camera. For example, when I'm having dinner and I want to photograph uh, what kind of food that I'm eating and also when I'm walking around the town and I don't really want to bring a big cameras around, I just want to walk around, be relaxed and have a little bit of, uh, you know, a peaceful time, relaxation time, then uh, it'll just be me and my smartphone. I don't really want to carry my other cameras, my micro four thirds cameras. I want to keep it lightweight and easy and just convenient and just hassle free. And uh, my S21 FE has been really wonderful uh, being my peaceful time, relaxing time kind of camera. In terms of video, sometimes I will also take uh, a little bit of B-roll clips using my smartphone to complement my other cameras uh, when it comes to video. Uh, so for example, when I'm in a restaurant and I want to film a little bit of the B-roll of the uh, food that I'm eating, uh, I will usually uh, go for my smartphone instead of my cameras because it's just more convenient and also it's more inconspicuous so I can just film the B-rolls and uh, I don't look like I'm trying to film something that is serious and I don't draw too much attention. Also, when I'm on the plane during my departure, uh, if I want to film B-roll, I will use my smartphone instead of taking out uh, my cameras from my carry-on luggage because uh, it's just easily reachable. Now, when it comes to the quality of the video taken using the S21 FE, especially during my trip to Iceland, I think the video quality is more than good enough. It is sharp, it is contrasty, and uh, you know, uh, it is punchy as well. The color is good. And when I combine it with the footage of my other cameras, it can blend really well. Uh, there's no problem with the image quality of the video capabilities of this phone. However, the problem is the frame rate. The choices of frame rate uh, using the default camera application on the S21 FE is rather limiting. You can only do 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and then slow motion is maybe only 120 or 240 frames per second. There's no option for 25 frames per second like what I'm doing right now. And yeah, uh, because I'm mainly shooting in 25 frames per second, then it's causing a little bit of a problem for me. So I have to use an external application when I'm recording video. And my application of choice for the S21 FE is the Filmic Pro. So based on my observation of using my S21 FE uh, as my alternative camera during my trip to Iceland, I can safely say that uh, modern smartphones nowadays 
is more than sufficient enough for taking good pictures and video during a trip, especially to a trip uh, to Iceland like what I just did. Uh, however, I just want to mention some pros and cons so that you are aware of the benefits and the risks of using smartphones as your only camera if you're traveling uh, somewhere, especially to Iceland in my case. So first pro is that this is also a communication device. Uh, you can use this as a GPS, as an email messaging tool, as a telephone as well to call and book uh, for restaurants or to contact someone and uh, for social media, for media consumption. And you can install applications on this phone and make it into a portable studio as well. So this is a very powerful little computer that happens to have great camera setup as well. And that means every time you take a picture or a video, you can just send it directly to your families and friends through a different bunch of apps, or you can also edit it directly inside the phone using a photo editing app or video editing app. I happen to use Adobe Lightroom mobile inside this phone to edit a little bit of my pictures to make it look uh, prettier. And also I use uh, some video editing application as well uh, using this phone. Compared to a real camera, specifically my Micro Four Thirds camera, uh, well, yes, you can Wi-Fi the pictures to your phone and then just edit inside the phone and just send the uh, pictures from the Micro Four Thirds camera uh, to uh, your email or your uh, messaging app or whatever. Uh, but uh, it's an extra step and then you have to send the files to the phone and that takes a lot of time and it's just not as convenient as only using your phone. Next benefit, using phone is very inconspicuous. Everybody has smartphones these days. And uh, if you're taking out your phone from your pocket, it will not draw too much attention. If you photograph something with smartphone, it's pretty common nowadays. So uh, people will not complain and they won't get bothered. So you can be more stealthy and just be more uh, inconspicuous and not draw too much attention when you are using smartphone. Because if you are carrying a dedicated camera, problem is, uh, although my Micro Four Thirds camera is small compared to like full frame or APS-C, it is still a big piece of uh, technology. Uh, people can see it. It looks like a camera. And if you're taking pictures, then people will notice you. If you're going to tourist attractions, to waterfalls, to uh, landscape outer kind of things, then it's fine because it's normal. But when you're in the city, uh, sometimes people will look at you and like, oh, what is he doing? Next benefit of using your smartphone as your only camera camera is that you're saving space and weight by not having to carry a dated camera, especially if you travel by air, because the restrictions of weight is pretty limiting. Seven kilograms for carry on luggage is very limiting and it's a bit challenging to carry cameras and lenses uh, to fit into that, uh, you know, restriction. Next benefit of using smartphone as your camera during travel, especially uh, in my case, trip to Iceland, is that you can, uh, you know, kind of take advantage of the computational photography uh, that is built inside uh, the smartphones. Uh, for example, you can create a fake background blur using the portrait mode of the camera application. And also you can take a picture of the lower light situation using night mode that is also available in the camera application as well. So it's a little bit smarter when compared to using dedicated camera like my Micro Four Thirds camera as well, because uh, it is, you know, uh, doing the computational uh, inside automatically. So you don't really have to do anything. And that leads me to the final benefit is that everything uh, in the smartphone is all automatic. Yes, there's a little bit of manual control, not that much. Uh, however, if you're not really that savvy, you just want to take a great picture, you don't really want to, uh, to take a lot of effort in getting that picture, you want everything to be automatic, smartphone is the choice. 
Now to some negatives. First negative continuation from my last benefit is the fact that it's not really good when it comes to manual mode. Everything here is touch screen. You have to touch the actual screen and uh, swipe and do those kind of things. It's not really tactile. If you want to change shutter speed or ISO or something like that, you have to scroll and that's just not practical and it's not easy in my opinion. So better leave it at automatic and sometimes, sometimes there will be times when you want to be able to use manual control, especially during backlight situation or if you want to decide whether your subject uh, will be bright or will be silhouette, things like that. So manual control with smartphone is almost non-existent. Next, focal length. Although modern smartphones nowadays typically will have three uh, lenses, uh, ultra wide, wide and medium telephoto, you cannot really go further into ultra telephoto range unless you buy specific smartphones like the S22 Ultra or something like that. So yeah, flexibility will be a little bit of an issue. Next problem, battery life because this is also your communication device, not just a dedicated camera. Uh, it will mean that uh, you will get limited battery life using your smartphone when you're doing photography and video pretty intensely and it will drain your battery really fast and you'll have to bring also power banks or you'll have to charge it uh, when you're in a cafe or in a restaurant or something like that. So just keep that in mind as well. Next, accessories. You cannot really put ND filters without using special casing or adapters. You cannot really use tripod uh, except if you have that adapter that you can clamp on the phone and uh, put into the tripod. So it's a little bit more limiting when using accessories for photography or video with your smartphone. However, nowadays it's becoming more common to buy uh, filters or, you know, a lens adapter or tripod adapter for phones. So now it's not as difficult as years before. Next, distraction. Well, this is a little bit of a controversial topic because smartphone is meant to be a communication device first and then multimedia device second. So it is inevitable when uh, you're taking picture, all of a sudden you'll receive a call or a message from somebody and it'll ruin your moments when you're taking picture or video. But you just have to deal with it. Either put it in airplane mode or just uh, turn off the GSM or just ignore the phone calls or message completely and deal with them after you finish taking pictures or video. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, those are all the positives and negatives of using smartphone as a camera for your travel photography and video. And in conclusion, I think it is very possible, it is very doable to uh, just take your smartphone as your only camera when you travel uh, to a nature-oriented destination such as Iceland. I think it's very doable. You will get great results as long as you understand the limitation of your smartphone, uh, the strengths and weakness of the smartphone when compared to uh, other cameras. And if you know how to work around the limitations of the smartphone, I think you can always maximize the result uh, by just using smartphone. For me personally, I will always try to carry a dedicated camera such as my micro photos camera when I travel simply because it is more tactile, I can be more precise, I can uh, control more things especially in manual mode uh, to get a more accurate kind of photographs and video as well out of my cameras. But that's just me. If uh, it is not possible for me to travel with micro photos cameras, at least I know that I can get great results as well using my smartphone. So yeah, uh, for me personally, uh, both has its own strengths and weakness and you just need to understand how to work around the weakness and maximize the strengths to get the best results for travel photography and video. And that is all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Uh, so please comment down below. Have you ever traveled only using your smartphone and get great photograph and video results just using smartphone? 
and yeah also if you have any other question please let me know in the comments down below so yeah thank you so much for watching please also consider to subscribe to my channel and share my videos so that i can be more motivated to keep making these videos for you all right thank you for watching and goodbye